Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today is part two of the animation series that we're working on. Last time we covered where to find the animation tools within Clip Studio Paint. If you haven't already seen that video, I would recommend going back and watching through that one at least partially before you do this one. This one is going to be a little bit more specific on the onion skin and light table tools. As a quick refresher, the onion skin tool we demoed in the last video is used to view the previous and the coming frames so that you can in between easier. You can also use it to animate straight ahead, which is animating one frame and then adding a new one and using the onion skin to reference that last frame while you're drawing. We turn it off and on here with this little icon and this is how you locate the onion skin settings where you can change the colors and opacities of the previous and coming frames. The onion skin tool is great for small animations, things that don't have too much movement that aren't going to be moving across the canvas too much that are kind of staying in the same location. This tool is good for explosions, walk cycles, head turns, droplets, anything that's going to move in a relatively small area and is going to have some kind of like rotation to it. It's great for like facial expressions and stuff like that. Onion skin tools are pretty common in animation programs. They have onion skin tools in like Toon Boom and Procreate. I'm pretty sure you can even use an onion skin tool in Photoshop if you have like an aftermarket mod for animation. If you want a free alternative to test out some animation just for fun, Krita is a really good option for that. I haven't tried the new animation tools that they've added. I know there is an aftermarket docker that you can install to use onion skin with their animation tools. Now we're going to go over how I use onion skinning in my workflow. First, we're going to need the initial frame for this little pumpkin lad animation. And then as soon as that's inked in, I'm going to turn on the onion skin and add a new layer. Once we can see the previous frame, we're going to go ahead and copy the parts of the first frame that we want to the second frame. Because we've got our animation set up like I showed you guys in the first episode of the animation series, so that the parts are foldered. That makes it so that you can copy the things in the animation cell folders to the next frame. This just saves me a ton of time because I want his body and his like bow tie and everything to stay in the same place and I just want his head to turn so I can just copy that part over, erase the head, and then draw the new one that I want to put in. If you want your animations to have a little bit more shakiness to them, I would recommend redrawing the whole thing. You can see here because I have the little animation folder set up, I can literally do just like a sketch layer and then go back and ink over the top of it so that I can make sure that I've got it correctly. If I was doing a animatic for this particular animation, that's basically what I would do for the whole thing is just sketch each frame and make sure that I've got everything lined up and then come back with a new animation folder in the timeline and ink on top of it. Then you just kind of continue from there. And once you get a few little frames going, it's a full animation, even if just like a little short one. I would recommend if you're trying to loop an animation that you copy the first frame or link the first frame like I showed you in the first video at the end of your little timeline so that you can use the onion skin to see like the previous and coming frames and it will do the same thing for that looped frame. That way, as you're animating, you can track where the loop begins and make sure that you line up the endings. There's another tool that Clip Studio Paint has called Light Table, and I think it's even better than the Onion Skin tool. This is the first program that I have seen that has a tool quite like this, and it's kind of my favorite. I tend to use Light Table over Onion Skin for every animation just because I find it a lot easier to use, and I find that it gives me better results overall. To open the light table tool, you're going to go to window animation cells and that will open this little bar. It allows you to basically use this top section and drag layers of your frame down into this little light table section. Once they're done in the light table section, you can manipulate them by scaling 
rotating, moving around the canvas, and they're not going to actually affect the frame that you drew within your animation. So you can add as many of these as you'd like to the light table and toggle them on and off with the little view eye. And you can move them around as you need them and then trace on top of them for new frames. There's a bunch of different settings within the light table tool. You need to toggle this little box with an arrow on to enable the light table. And then you want to use this little one of the light bulb to display common light table for the canvas. These are just the settings that I use. You can toggle the enable light table on and off if you're not using the light table. I tend to just kind of delete the frames that I have in the light table as I'm going. You can also adjust the opacity like you normally would in the layer menu, just up here at the top. And you can hide in view using this little eyeball. And then to deregister or delete the layer is this little square with a trash can. I find that if I use the light table versus onion skin, I get a lot smoother movement because I can basically move the whole little character or whatever I'm animating within the canvas and then retrace it for a new frame. I also like that this allows you to move the same frame multiple times to trace multiple different areas. Like if the little pumpkin lad's head was going to snap back, I would trace the head in one location and then rotate the canvas to the little body location and then trace those separately. So it can be a really helpful tool. It basically feels like you've got a drawing on paper on a light box and you can kind of manipulate it as you need to without changing the actual frame itself or without changing the frame that you're working on. When I'm ready to use the light table, I'll go ahead and set up the frames how I want and then I'll drag down the frame that I would like to move around and add a new frame so that I can trace on top of it. I'm then going to click on the light table layer down here and that will bring up the move rotation box that's sort of standard for Clip Studio and you can kind of move the apex where you want to rotate around as well as scale that box I don't think you can transform it, which would be really cool. Maybe they'll have that in a future update. You can add multiples of the same frame to the light box section so that you can move one and leave one where its original position is after you've moved or rotated or resized whatever you need to. You can also use this little circle icon to snap it back to its original position. And that's kind of the basics of this tool. Let me know if you guys found this helpful. Make sure you tag me if you make any animations using these tips. Please comment down below if you have any questions and I'll be happy to try and answer those for you. And we'll see you guys next time. If you're looking for more content like this, check out the first video in the animation series, my recent sketchbook tour, and the ongoing series that I'm making about creating comics. If you'd like to support this channel, please like and comment below and subscribe here on YouTube. You can also support me over on Patreon like these amazing humans. This video was brought to you by Anthony Jets, Terror Billy Jean, Jesse C, Tuna, and Theo. Thank you guys so much for your support.